Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to make these really cute bookmarks using supplies from our sponsor Paper Mart. I'm going to show you how to make a tassel out of baker's twine and also I want to show you these cool little uh, baggies. They're the same clear cello bags that I get in different sizes to package my craft fair items but I saw this two and a half inch by eight inch bag and I thought that would be perfect for bookmark sleeves. So that's what we're going to use today. Uh, the stamps I'm using are from this stamp set called Apple of My Eye from Stampin' Up and the bookmark I'm going to show you how to do is this orange one because I have some really neat tips and tricks for you that I think you're going to enjoy and of course I'll show you how to make the baker's twine. I'm going to put links to all these products I used in the video description and also I am going to put a link to mini tassels that Paper Mart also sells if you don't feel like making your own. But first let's get to the stamping. You'll want to put a piece of scrap paper down on your table to protect it. I'm going to be using a stippling brush for the background and this um, turquoisey blue ink. This is called Bahama Blue from Memento. Use whatever dye-based ink you like. And then I have four different shades of inks. I have two shades for the orange and I have two shades for the leaves. Now I'm going to show you a really neat trick. So this is how the stamp is supposed to go on an acrylic block with the embossed side up. But I wanted to have a cool kind of vintage offset look to my, um, to my bookmark. So I'm putting the stamp down upside down so the back side of my clear stamp is up. So this is only going to work on clear stamps, not on rubber stamps because it won't have the um you know, the stickitude to be able to put it on your stamp backwards, but it's such a fun technique. So what I'm doing is I'm inking this up in the lighter color and I'm going to stamp this a few times on my bookmark. And um, I recommend that you just kind of try to build your pattern so that it's fairly even and let it go off the edges and in some spots. I think that looks kind of cool. You can have some that are completely, or you could stack them all up. I mean, just play with the design and have fun with it. Maybe this one I'll have all the way on. That didn't stamp perfectly, but it's really not gonna be that big of a deal. Just make sure you ink it up well. It also can help if you stamp on a magazine or something with a little bit of squish to it. There we go. Now what I'm going to do, and this is, oh, this is another really great uh, tip, really frugal tip. I picked this microfiber cloth up at the Dollar Tree, and you actually get two in a pack for a buck, and it cleans my stamps with just plain water really well. And since I always have a spray bottle of water on my table upstairs for water coloring, it works great. You just need to make sure you dry it off good before you flip it over. So now I'm going to flip it over. So now I have the embossed side or the correct side of my stamp ready to go. And now I'm going to ink that up with this orange color. This is Tangelo, again, by Memento. You can use whatever brand you prefer. Just make sure you have it inked up really well. And then I'm going to stamp, actually I'm going to start up here because this one is, is probably the driest. You're going to stamp right down over what you already did. And then you get this cool kind of vintage offset print looking um, image. I think this looks so fun and you can do this with any of the, um, the, the clear stamps you have that are kind of symmetrical shaped. You can get that really awesome custom offset look. I think it's super fun. I'm going to do the same thing with the leaf. I'm going to start by flipping it over so I have the wrong side up because that's a fairly symmetrical shape so that'll work as well. And I'm going to stamp little leaves on my oranges here and there. Just gonna build up my pattern um, just so it looks kind of fun. You could put a couple on there if you wanted to. Completely up to you. Have fun with it. Alright, then again we wash up our stamp and we flip it over. And I'm gonna go in with a Cottage Ivy which is a, um, a darker green, kind of like almost like a pine green. And just stamp right on top of all the leaves we already printed. It's so easy and fun and it just gives you a totally different look and it gives you a new way to use your supplies that it's like getting two stamps for the price of one or four stamps for the price of two in this case. So now to put a little more color in the background, I'm going to use my color duster and this lovely blue ink. I'm just putting my um, stippling brush right across there. You could use a sponge, like a makeup sponge if that's what you have. I think these brushes, these are the color dusters by Judykins. They are difficult to find nowadays. So if you can find like any sort of um, brush that's got bristles like this, it should work pretty well for you. Like some of the kids chunky brushes would work really well for this. All right, now this is gonna go into a sleeve. So you do need to make sure you trim these uh, to the right size. So I trimmed these, um, I trimmed a piece of cardstock down to eight inches and then I trimmed it down to two and a half inch widths. So I got four out of one piece of cardstock. Not bad for a bookmark. 
and then I am going to, you could actually just keep it like that, it's very pretty, but I like to put a tassel, so what I'm going to do is use my crocodile to punch a little hole, and I'm going to set an eyelet in there because it's pretty, and it also will make it a little bit more durable. My friend Nicole gave me these, uh, these cute triangle eyelets, I think they're really awesome. And I like this tool because you can set your eyelets quietly. <laughs> there. So now all we have to do is make a tassel to go with it. To make the tassel, I am going to use a tassel making tool, but you could always just use like a clear stamping block or a building block or a piece of cardboard as your template. It doesn't really matter, but this does make it a little bit easier because it's got this handy slit into it already. What I'm going to do is pull out a little bit of my baker's twine. I thought this uh, this kind of yellow and white stripe was really pretty. Uh, Paper Mart has their own line of baker's twine and it's very affordable so you don't have to worry about using um, enough of it to make a tassel because it's it's very affordable and it comes in really big spools so you'll be looking for ways to, uh, to use it if you buy it because you won't feel stingy. Now I'm simply going to wrap this around many times um, just to the thickness that I want. You don't want it as full as like a pom-pom because then it won't um, um, it won't dangle like a tassel is supposed to. It will be too fluffy and too round. So I think that's probably sufficient there. This little template is by Susan Bates. Um, you can probably find it at any store that sells mm -hmm. a yarn and crafting supplies. I got mine for, I think it was 50 cents. I think that was on sale though. So what you're going to do is you're going to trim that away from the little slit. And then you're going to cut off a piece of... Um, twine that's probably about a foot long and you're gonna put that through the um, right through the loop of of the twine so if you're doing this um, using a piece of cardboard or something you'll actually have to pull that off the cardboard to do this in most cases and what I'm gonna do is um, I am going to first tie this tightly right around the top there and that is going to give me um, that's going to kind of bind all of those strands together we're going to have two different places we bind Get that bound together there first I'm going to tie it twice okay then I'm also going to do an overhand knot here at the top it's just going to make it easier for us to hook it to our bookmark okay and then I'm just going to trim that neatly all right, now what I need is a about a six inch piece of twine. And I'm just gonna pull that right off like that. And this, I just wanna go through the, um, through the slit there. So this does make it a little easier than doing it on cardboard because it holds everything in place while you're working. If you have any loose ends, just go ahead and pull them down. All right, and you're just pulling it, you pulled that loose, loose end through the other side so it's going around the whole gob of fabric or twine rather and then you're going to tie this as tight as you can the nice thing about Baker's twine is that it's a cotton string so once you pull it tight it doesn't really want to loosen up on you which is nice we, so but the nice thing about this is we're binding it twice we've got the binding at the top and we've got this binding here now we can slide the whole thing off just like so you want to make sure you pull Make sure that string is pulled right to the top. We want that nice and even. And then we're going to go with our scissors and cut through our loops. Okay, just kind of pull it down like that. Make sure you go through all your loops. Now, where you cut, where you bound it around the center, you're going to usually end up with one strand that just wants to go the opposite direction. And to remedy that, I just take a little tiny crochet hook and I feed it up through the knot up, up under the, like the binding stitch the binding uh, thread and I just pull it down in the middle there whoops a little awkward sorry about that just gonna pull that down in there so they all want to hang down nice and low and now I just got to give it a haircut just gonna trim it right across flush that's all there is to making a tassel you can do this with whatever yarn or string you like I thought the baker's twine was just such a fun touch, especially with a um, with a fruit-themed card. It reminds me of like a preserve or something. So then what I'm going to do is just put my um, ends through here. Hopefully, I could get that knot through there. I didn't um, I didn't try that with doing the knot first. So hopefully, I could pull that right through. Yes, I can. Awesome. And then we're going to just do an overhand knot like that. And there we have 
our cute little bookmark and tassel. I hope you enjoyed this project today. If so, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you're going to try it. I think it's so fun and I love the, um, the options on this stamp set because I was able to do all this different fruit with just that one set of stamps. So I love it when I can find a stamp set that I can use a lot of different ways. This would be a really fun project to do with the kids, especially if they're driving you a little bananas on home on break this week if your kids are on school vacation. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Please visit our sponsor at www.papermart.com. Packaging for less.